Well, good morning and welcome to Jam is with Jesus on this Saturday, January 9th. Um, I, I didn't have my sign from upstairs, so I figured <laughs> it might be a little uh, confusing if you just, if I opened up early and you saw um, curtains and in a strange place. So uh, our daughter, son-in-law, and uh, two granddaughters moved in with us this past week. They came out from LA and we're thrilled to have them. We all tested negative uh, thanks to Clemson University's expansion of their testing out into the greater community so that um, we'd got our results a week ago and had been hunkering down and then uh, Ben, Elise, and the girls uh, got their test results. They tested on Tuesday morning and had their results by Tuesday late afternoon. And so um, we enjoyed dinner together. Uh, we're still in the process of working out uh, or at least I should say I am, uh, of whether I have stuff upstairs or downstairs in my office upstairs or down here. Um, but those are to be expected. Uh, it's, it's, it's been fantastic and um, grateful for this break after not having seen them for a year and a half in person. Um, today the text I'm reading is from Philippians uh, chapter 2. And I know Pastor Josh has spoken on this a couple times, um, but I'm, I'm sharing it with you and I'll explain in just a moment why. But this is Philippians 2. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And then it goes on to what's often referred to as here in the second chapter of Philippians, um, the Christ hymn, and talking about um, technical term. I don't remember all the technical terms by long shot, but kenosis is a self emptying this, this notion that God, um, that Jesus set aside all that glory to become incarnated and here living among us. I share that because yesterday the National Council of Churches, which uh, the ELCA, uh, our, our larger denomination is part of, um, the Episcopal Church USA, I think Presbyterian Church USA, many of the mainline denominations, uh, issued a statement to Vice President Pence, Congress, and the U.S. Cabinet calling on them to um, have President Trump step down. And they centered that letter on this text from Philippians about, let each of you not look to your own interests, but to the interests of others, and talked about the violation uh, this week of um, the encouragement, the incitement uh, that um, caused or, or was linked with um, the rioting. So if you might say, well, that's just a bunch of liberal Christians. What do they know? It's interesting to note that two days before that, the National Association of Manufacturers, which I doubt would be viewed as politically liberal, <laughs> um, had called on President Trump's resignation so um, there's a growing list. I think Senator Murkowski, a Republican senator from Alaska, uh, it came out yesterday. This is still in such great flux. Um, I, I have tended not to try to respond quickly, um, but try to take a few days to process to see where more information comes across, more um, context. And, and we're still very, very early on um, I'll just use my own calculations that um, if, if they estimated 40,000 people were in the Capitol uh, to peacefully gather to um, express their displeasure over the election results, it appeared to me, again, I'm not a great calculator of crowd sizes, but it appeared that if, if 40,000 were present, maybe several thousand actually were involved with going to the Capitol building and at least being visible on the steps and whatnot. So maybe it's just a few thousand out of that 40,000. And my guess is, at least from the videos I've seen, 
maybe we're talking hundreds then out of that 40,000 that um, breached the Capitol building. But within that group uh, were people chanting, hang Mike Pence, the vice president. That's an objective fact. You can hear it for yourself. A gallows had been erected outside. Now, whether that was a prop or functioning, <laughs> it was there because there is this conspiracy wing out there thinking that the storm was hitting, and that's the day, January 6th, to overturn everything. So I, I do have great faith and trust in um, FBI and others to sift out those who really were looking to do serious harm to our nation, serious harm to our elected leaders, whether I voted for them or not, they were our, they are our elected leaders. Um, I think each person participating in this <laughs> can say, we've had some folks that uh, we've wanted elected and we've had many folks we've not wanted elected and that's over a period of decades. That's how our system of government is in the United States. Um, so I digress a little bit. I, I, I tell you, one of the things that's been most helpful to me these past few years is to listen to voices, to hear voices other than um, my normal um, audience. And so listen to a lot more uh, persons of color, uh, a lot more people on the fringes, and um, folks that um, have literally been living in fear for losing their health insurance these last four years, uh, have been persecuted, targeted. Um, we as Christians, uh, it seems that the way of Jesus to me is um, one that seeks to look out for those who are oppressed, seeks to loose the bonds, sets the prisoners free, um, release to the captives. Um, but I'm game for having all kinds of conversations on how we interpret Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, what that means is our call as Christians. Um, I came across, and this was compliments of Pastor Bruce Boer. Uh, this was a, a, a letter that Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote, and we certainly hail him as one of the heroes within the Lutheran tradition as standing up to Nazism, and he ended up being hung for participating in a plot to overthrow um, Hitler. He was a pacifist, but over the years he came to believe that um, not doing something to fight evil was worse than, I guess, participating in a plot to, to try to assassinate Hitler. So this is written in 1943, 10 years after um, I think he first began speaking out against him. And Bonhoeffer writes, we have been silent witnesses of evil deeds we have been drenched by many storms. We have learned the arts of equivocation and pretense. Experience has made us suspicious of others and kept us from being truthful and open. Intolerable conflicts have worn us down and even made us cynical. Are we still of any use? We shall not need geniuses or cynics or misanthropes or clever tacticians, but rather plain, honest, straightforward men. Of course, I'd update that to people. Will our inward power of resistance be strong enough and our honesty with ourselves remorseless enough for us to find our way back to simplicity and straightforwardness? I have great hope that within the Christian community, we can hold one another accountable in the best sense that if we claim to do what we want to do, which is to become more Christ-like, then my siblings in Christ um, taking me by the, by the elbow or whatever and saying, you know, I, I don't see how this squares with being a follower of Jesus. And for me to take seriously those admonitions, uh, to be prayerful about that, to seek the Holy Spirit's guidance to say, please convict me where I'm in the wrong and strengthen me when I'm in the right. Not to be right for right's sake, but to be faithful, to follow the way of Jesus. Um, there's been a lot of calls right now for, for um, 
reconciliation to move forward. And, and I agree, long term, that's what we need. But again, to use Bonhoeffer, forgiveness without repentance is cheap grace. Um, a lot of soul searching will be done in the weeks, months, years to come. And I guess as, as part of a Christian community, we have, our, again, our friends in Christ who can help us um, maybe reflect on ourselves and, and see where we, we go from here. That's another book that's been quoted from Martin Luther King Jr. here recently because he asked the question in 1967, where do we go from here, chaos or community? Um, I'm all in favor of community, all in favor of what Jesus said about bringing abundant life uh, for all. So um, may we encourage one another to pursue those actions, pursue those words that help, um, help us keep following in the way of Jesus. So let us pray. Holy God, at a time when our nation is still in complete turmoil, um, both from the pandemic and its ravages, um, with the events in the Capitol this week and the, and the aftermath, the anticipation of the inauguration and what that will lead to, um, we pray for your peace. We pray for your wisdom. We pray for your guidance. We pray that we all will be led to repentance of what we need to repent of to make amends to others as we are able and to seek you in building that community that, that breaks down all barriers, all dividing walls, where everyone can be loved and cherished as a child of God. This is beyond our own doing, Lord. We prove that day in and day out. But help us do what we are able and to trust in you to do the rest. And these things we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God's peace truly be with you this day. I hope you have an opportunity for some physical activity, some fresh air, um, to maintain some of your own um, health and well-being. And as always, if you'd like to call or text or email myself or Pastor Josh, please do so. And look forward to worshiping with you tomorrow morning, Facebook Live, 9 a.m. Bye-bye.